just as it's very rare that a parent doesn't love and care about their child, even if they can't care for them. Um, so it's true that it's very rare that um, a social worker will have come into the profession without a desire to improve and the lives of those families that they're working with. Um, and what the Charter does is it sets out very simply the sort of basics that it's reasonable for families to be able to expect of children's services and what um, it's reasonable for professionals to be able to expect when working with families. I think my initial involvement with social services, there was absolutely no respect. I'd have my bins gone through, I'd have people spying through the windows hoping to catch me out with something, and living like that is a horrible way to be treated. But then to finally go on to meet someone who didn't just treat me as a human being, but treated me as a mother, despite the fact that I'd lost my children, she never for a second forgot that I was a mother and she treated me like that and that made an enormous difference. It made such a difference that I, I turned my entire life around based on the fact that one person had some faith in me and believed that I did deserve better than had happened to me. Interestingly, respect is the one that starts first and for me that's, that's a key issue really. You know, Regardless of a person's gender, race, age or ability, their culture, education, um, ethnicity, it's recognising and respecting and valuing that, that we're all individuals and we all have a story to tell and with that it's accepting where people are coming from and that they have a, a right to be heard and they have a right to be involved in processes involving them and their children. It would allow both sides, both parties, like families and um, practitioners, to recognise um, the importance of staying transparent and honest with each other. Even if we have to sometimes, we as practitioners make very, very difficult decisions, um, it's easier for parents to accept them if they recognise they, that we've been honest in the process of coming to making these decisions. They're here to tr say they're here to support you, but it never seemed that that was what was happening. It was more I was getting a finger wagged at me and told this needs to be done, that needs to be done, then they'd disappear for six weeks, eight weeks, turn back up. And it was so inconsistent that so much can happen in your life in them short spaces that you never get off the merry-go-round. As kinship carers, we're, we are there we, we want to help and we want to work with um, social care, care, but in order for it to happen, they have to see us. 
and include us in their planning and their provision and their support structures. If there had been some kind of agreement between me and social services so that I knew what I was entitled to and knew how to get the help and support that I needed, things could have been very, very different. It would have felt a lot more like we were working together than it was a a me against them. One thing that has been very useful for me is um, getting precise advice, good advice, um, getting social workers who are trained, knowledgeable um, about their subject. I think what they should do is not obviously not fully integrate, but be integrated as a member of the family because they are, you know, and they represent a big organisation. And they're a small part of it, but they're a big part of our family or, you know, everybody's families. <clears throat> so I, th- I think I think continuity is probably one of the most vital aspects of interaction between social services and families. Because without it, you know, you're meeting a social worker, you're getting to know them and then they're leaving. And then you're getting to know another social worker and you get to know them and they're leaving or, you know, and it's... <clears throat> It's not good for the parents and it's not good for the children. You know, so continuity is... And it can, it can, I think it can be achieved if, if social workers are given more support in their roles from their managers and, and from society because they're given a bad name. And yes, social services do make mistakes and yes, social services have still not got it right. But I think with things like this this charter, giving us a voice enables them to also have a voice, you know, so I think that's a positive. <laughs> Families don't even know what social workers are about or social services is for. They have an idea in their head, which is usually, you know, fed through schools or parents. And not many people really in in the norm have run-ins with social services, so don't actually know what you're getting involved in. So for the families, it's really important because then they've got an idea of actually what you're stepping into. And for the social workers and the practitioners, they need it (laughs) so much because they've all been trained differently, they've all got different programmes, and then they all come into a workplace and they've all got different ideas, so they haven't got anything to follow. I think the language of the charter is really important. Um, It talks about openness, honesty and respect. A family deserves to be treated like people that actually have a lot of positives and strengths that they bring to the table. I think it should be a partnership so a charter would give us a framework under which one can refer back to a particular um, manager or a particular service user or or another professional and say but hang on a second the language of this charter across the country is saying that parents deserve to have things in plain English well communicated we're not going to be removing children and not telling mum or dad that this is where we think things need to be. Um, That openness and that communication is really important. 
Uh, and, and one thing I've seen within that language is that it talks about our humanity. It's talking about the whole group together um, rather than us and them and this idea that you know we have to work against families rather than with them. I think it will bring real results. Um, social work, uh, working with families, is all about making those relationships. And if this charter can be kind of the backdrop, the foundation to building those relationships and making those strong, and right from the outset saying, this is what we, this is what we want, um, we're going to be honest and open, and this is what we'd like from you, I think you can build from that. And perhaps we have to ask some really diff- difficult questions of families. Um, it is intrusive, the things that we have to ask, and we often meet families when they're at crisis. Um, so I think this charter will help with that relationship right, right from that word go, really.